I stayed in two different cabin categories on Real Caribbean's brand new Icon of the Seas, and there were some pros and cons to these cabins beyond the obvious. I wanted to talk about what it's like in a room on Icon of the Seas up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RealCaribbeanBlog.com. I'm back from Icon of the Seas, having spent one and a half cruises on board this brand new cruise ship. And along the way, I got to stay in both a standard balcony cabin along with an infinite grand suite. And in looking back at it, I wanted to share and contrast what the differences are and is it really worth it to get a suite or what are the advantages of a balcony? And what really stood out to me about these two types of cabins is the balcony was a traditional ocean balcony with a traditional door that you open up, go onto the balcony, there's chairs, you can look around. It's a traditional stereotypical ocean balcony. My suite was an infinite balcony, and this is a new concept within the cruise industry. Celebrity Cruises first introduced this, and Royal Caribbean has now borrowed this idea with Icon of the Seas. An infinite balcony essentially is a window that slides down. The balcony space can be used as a traditional balcony in a sense, or incorporated into the overall living area. But there isn't actually an open air balcony you step onto, rather you have the option of opening or closing a window to allow fresh air into the cabin. It's an interesting idea, and I quite frankly didn't love it on Celebrity. I liked it a little bit better here on Icon of the Seas, although admittedly here on Icon it was January and the humidity was much less than it was when I experienced it on Celebrity. But there are some major differences between this kind of a balcony versus an infinite balcony. Anyway, let's talk about what these room types are. So starting off with my cabin on deck 14, which was a traditional ocean facing balcony. With Icon of the Seas, Royal Group has made some interesting changes to the balcony cabin, and it's worth noting some of these. A traditional ocean-facing balcony on Icon has 200 square feet of living space with an additional 50 square feet of balcony space. While there are cabins on Icon of the Seas that can sleep up to four guests, this particular balcony cabin was designed for just two guests only, so because of this, there was no bunk bed or sofa couch that you can see here. Upon entering the cabin, there's a small touchscreen next to the bathroom door where you can control the temperature and lighting in your cabin. Now, the balcony is configured with a king bed, although the beds can be separated as pretty much is the case with any kind of Royal Caribbean cruise ship. The beds are usually joined together by default, but if you're sailing with somebody you don't want to necessarily be sleeping in the same bed as, you can ask your stateroom attendant to separate them. In addition, the balcony cabin had a full-size couch adjacent to the bed. Since this cabin only sleeps two guests, the couch was not a sofa sleeper, but the couch was large enough that someone certainly could sleep on it, I would guess, but it's really meant for lounging more than anything. Probably the most noticeable change with a balcony cabin on Icon is of course the decor. And Royal Caribbean seems to be embracing more of a minimalistic approach to the design of Icon of the Seas. I remember going on cruise ships like Odyssey of the Seas and Wonder of the Seas and thinking that the cabin design reminded me a little bit more of Ikea. Now that's a bad thing, by the way. I do love their furniture as well, but a lot of the decor, the aesthetic of it reminded me of an Ikea store Whereas the design on Icon clearly has taken a different approach and you're going to find very light colors of gray, tan, and a few pops of yellow and blue. Surrounding the television, there are a few tropical designs that are quite subtle. Above the vanity, there's a small pop of yellow under the mirror and the vanity shares a light blue with a tropical design that matches the throw pillows on the couch. Something else you're going to notice about the cabin is you don't have to go very far to find a power outlet because in your cabin, there are more outlets than I've ever seen on any other cruise ship. Usually on a cruise ship, there's like one or two outlets. You got to fight over who gets to plug in their device at a time on Icon. That is no longer a problem because they've added so many different outlets, which is a really big deal for families because that means everybody should probably have enough outlets to keep your devices charged. There are USB outlets by the bed, power outlets. There are additional outlets, including USB-C outlets around the cabin. It's truly incredible how many outlets there were and how much easier it is to keep everything charged from a convenient standpoint. Something else I noticed about the cabins on Icon of the Seas in general is I felt like there's just a little less storage space than maybe on, again, Wonder of the Seas or Odyssey of the Seas or Symphony of the Seas. Royal Caribbean seems to have gone for a different aesthetic design around the bed primarily that reduced the storage space that used to exist around the bed frame. Now we talked about this in another video in which I talked about the things I loved and hated about Icon of the Seas. Check out that video. But I wanted to point this out as something of a change that you should be aware of. Again, there is enough space to put all your things away, but there isn't, I feel like, as much space 
as you might find on one of those other ships. I didn't bring out my like, you know, volume metric measuring tools, but that was my sense of it anyway. Something else I loved about Icon of the Seas cabins are the bathroom because the cruise ship cabin bathrooms have come a long way in terms of design in space. If you've ever sailed on an older cruise ship, you know how small the bathrooms can be. And I was really pleased to find that in a balcony cabin on Icon of the Seas, the bathroom was spacious and efficient. The cabin shower was also impressive with a very large space allocated for it. The glass door maneuvered inward and sideways to keep the bathroom less cramped. And I appreciated the size of the shower because cruise ship cabins tend to be like really small and feel like a tube. This one actually felt like a real shower. Something very notable in the cabin bathroom was the addition of a seat in the shower. All the cabins on Icon of the Seas have a seat in the shower now, which is a major upgrade because those that are looking for a little more comfort can now enjoy a shower seat as a seemingly standard feature for the Icon of the Seas cabins. Moving over to the balcony, when cruising on Icon of the Seas, you can choose from many different balcony cabins. There are balconies available both inward and outward facing, with some balconies overlooking neighborhoods like Central Park and Surfside, while others facing the ocean. With the standard ocean facing balcony, this is the traditional balcony, rather than of course the infinite balcony, which we'll talk about in a little bit. This cabin provides two deck chairs with a footrest along with a small table. At 50 square feet, the size is just enough for guests to enjoy the ocean breeze and views from their private veranda. The nice thing about a traditional ocean facing cabin is you can go out here, you can keep the door closed, so that way anybody inside is not impacted by you being outside. And of course you have more of an ocean breeze that encompasses the area. The temperature outside will basically be the same temperature in your balcony. And it allows for sunning yourself, being able to stick your head out and peek around the corner. Things that really are the traditional experiences you have here with a traditional ocean veranda. For the three night media preview cruise that Royal Caribbean provided for me, full disclosure on that front, I stayed in this ocean facing balcony. For the seven night inaugural sailing of Icon of the Seas, I paid for on my own to move up to an infinite grand suite. Part of that was because I thought my wife was coming with me. She didn't, but that's another story for another day. Regardless of that, I moved up to an infinite grand suite located on deck nine. Now there are suites throughout Icon of the Seas. And in the case of the infinite grand suites, they're on deck nine, instead of being located up on deck 17 or 18, which is where the suite neighborhood is located. There are pros and cons of being on deck nine instead of deck 17 or 18. For one thing, being on deck nine means I'm a lot closer to the Royal Promenade and other activities around the ship. I was less dependent on elevators because I was literally right in the middle of the ship. Of course, being on deck nine and not deck 17 means I have a longer distance to go to the suite lounge or coastal kitchen, which are some of the best benefits of staying in a suite. Speaking of the suite experience, an infinite grand suite is a sky class cabin. That means it enjoys some of the best benefits on board a Royal Caribbean cruise ship. You'll enjoy complimentary Wi-Fi, access to Coastal Kitchen for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, the suite lounge, which includes alcohol throughout the day, as well as, of course, the suite concierge services, priority boarding. These are really nice benefits of staying in the suite. And of course, these are all benefits that you don't get by staying in a balcony cabin. Now, upon entering this cabin, just like the balcony, there is, of course, controls that allow you to control the temperature and lighting in the cabin, in addition to the blinds. So there are a number of blinds in the room, but the blinds that are controlled by the panel are actually available to control the blinds that cover the infinite balcony space, meaning that you can open and close the blinds automatically rather than having to go over there yourself. Not a big deal, obviously, but it's nice to have that, especially because you can also control the blinds from the Royal Caribbean app. This was really helpful when I wake up in the morning, grab my phone off the counter, which has been charging because of the convenient outlet near the bed, and be able to open the blinds without ever getting out of bed. It's a nice way to be able to see what's going on outside. Being a suite, there's a lot more living space. It's probably the most noticeable thing you're gonna figure out right off the bat. Now this particular cabin, room 9228, could accommodate up to four people. There's also a privacy curtain in between the bedroom area and the couch, and the couch did open up into a sofa bed. Not that I ever did that, but that was an available option. There were two televisions, which meant the people in the bedroom and people on the couch could watch TV, although that privacy curtain is definitely not soundproof. So I'm not sure how it would have worked trying to compete for volume with both TVs on. And I also noticed that any of the remotes would operate both TVs. There are many instances in which I tried to turn on my TV in the bed and it actually turned on the TV for the couch and vice versa. So again, I'm not sure how practical all that was, but something to keep in mind. When you stay in any suite, your bathroom also gets a big upgrade. First of all, there is not a stand-up shower. There is a bathtub, which includes obviously a shower head there, but you'll notice there's no shower seat there. And I was talking to some of the ladies that I happen to know on board the ship and asking them their opinions on this. 
Many said they prefer a shower seat over a bathtub, but it definitely was a matter of personal preference as it relates to, you know, grooming and whatnot. Otherwise, having the additional space was really nice. In fact, with the Infinite Grand Suite, there was a split bathroom, which would have been very helpful if I was sharing this cabin with my kids, because you have the toilet and a sink and one bathroom, and then the shower and another sink in the other one, which means, of course, someone is in the shower, someone's in the toilet, they're not using up all the facilities. And that's really helpful for families that are looking to take advantage of the space. Another benefit to staying in a suite is you have an in-room coffee maker. I'll admit, I never, ever, ever use the in-room coffee maker. I always go downstairs to get my coffee made for me, but I know there are some people that use it, so it's an available option here. But let's talk about the infinite balcony because this is the big difference between this type of cabin being an infinite balcony and the traditional ocean-facing balcony, which doesn't. I'll start with the benefits of the infinite balcony. First of all, having an infinite balcony means the balcony space, like the floor space, comes back to you that you can use throughout the day. And having that much space for a balcony, in this case, the infinite balcony, was nice to have that much more living space because traditionally, when you have an ocean-facing balcony, that living space the balcony provides is nice, but if it's hot or sunny or what have you, you don't get to really use it most of the time, only when you're outside. With an infinite balcony, with the infinite balcony up, this becomes just an extension of your overall living space. And again, imagine you're sharing this cabin with four people now, right? Having every extra square foot of space really made a difference. And on some days, I would sit out on the balcony without the window open just to enjoy the view. So it was able to really reclaim that living space, which was really very nice. And there were more chairs to sit in. It was just more opportunities to enjoy that space. And for every cabin, and of course on a cruise ship, you'll notice that cabins are usually pretty small. This was nice to have that additional option there. But the downside of this cabin is it's really not a balcony. Roller Queen calls it an infinite balcony. It's really a window. It slides open and closed. You use controls to do so. And when you open and close the windows, pretty quickly, the air obviously comes flowing in and that can rapidly heat up your room depending on what the temperature is outside. When I was on Celebrity and we would open the window and this was back in November, which was still a very humid time of the year, it really fogged up everything in the cabin and it would take a little while for the air conditioner to kick back on once the window is closed to cool down the cabin. My issue with the infinite balcony is it just doesn't feel like a balcony when you have that window open because it's just not quite the same thing. You can't peer around so much. I mean, you can't stick your head out certainly, but that's about the extent of it. It's not quite the same thing as moving up to the balcony railing and looking around and being able to have more of a peripheral view and be able to enjoy that outdoor space because it doesn't feel like outdoor space. It feels more like you're in a car and you roll down the window. Does that feel like you're outside the car? No, it just feels like you have a face full of air. And that's essentially what it feels like on the balcony. Now in January, it's not that humid out. And I had the window down and I was able to enjoy the breeze while working on my computer. And that was actually very enjoyable. But when I go on Icon of the Seas in June, I'm not so sure it'd be quite as enjoyable from that perspective. Now, I know what you're all thinking, Matt, this is all great and everything, but the biggest difference between a balcony and a suite is the price. And you would be absolutely right about that. Suites were always gonna cost you a lot more. They are a splurge. You should never look at a suite as a dollar for dollar value for moving up to a balcony in the sense that you're not gonna be able to get X amount of dollars of value out of it to justify it. Staying in a suite is like booking first class airfare, buying a Rolex watch or anything else that is just simply above and beyond what you really quote unquote need. It's a way to splurge, treat yourself and be able to enjoy the fruits of your labor, so to speak. And in the case of the Infinite Grand Suite, that was very much so. Now I kind of knew about this and part of the also rationale for staying in a suite was because this was the inaugural sailing of Icon of the Seas, I knew that many of my viewers and readers wanted to know about the suite experience, what the suite neighborhood looks like and the amenities that were provided there. So admittedly, part of the impetus for booking this particular cabin was quote unquote, in the name of research. I know nobody has any sympathy for me and I'm not looking for any, but I wanted to point out that aspect too. I think most people watching this video are not into booking any cabin for research purposes, rather because they want to enjoy a nice room on a cruise ship. So when you're looking at a cabin, part of it is going to be looking at how much does the balcony cost? How much more does the suite cost? And is that value so worth it? Everybody has a different perspective. There are some people probably in the comments, who say suites are never worth it, they'd rather just book an inside cabin, save the money, and be able to cruise more. And they're not wrong, but certainly people that look to go and stay in a suite appreciate the finer things in life, or rather, they just simply want the finer things in life, right? And they wanna be able to take advantage of all that, and they like being able to go to Coastal Kitchen and the suite lounge and be able to 
you know, enjoy the reserved seating for sweet guests at shows. These are nice perks. It's just an easier way to cruise and they are willing to pay extra for it. So traditional ocean balcony or infinite balcony. Now granted my infinite balcony was not a traditional balcony. It was a suite, not quite apples to apples, but having experienced it both on Celebrity and Royal Caribbean, I still prefer an ocean balcony personally. I won't say that I wouldn't want to stay in this kind of cabin again, but the nice thing about the infinite balcony is of course the extra living space, which I definitely take more advantage of than I ever do with a balcony. I'm the first to admit when I have a balcony cabin, especially in the summer months, I rarely spend much time out there, but having the infinite balcony and being able to have that space open available to me, even when the window was closed was a very nice touch. That being said, all things being equal, I would much rather prefer an ocean balcony than an infinite balcony, but hey, that's just me. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think of these type of cabins and which would you pick for your cruise? Let me know in the comments below. While you're below our video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube Plus will have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.